Hi, Dave Smith here. Um, this is another in my getting ready for wet plate uh, series of videos and this is the biggie. It's about this. Now, yeah, I bet you've guessed what's in here. So what I've got in here is um, silver nitrate solution. Now I'm going to start off with health and safety um, because why not and then I'm going to keep reiterating that. So first off silver nitrate is a very very bad substance, highly corrosive. Uh, so for example you, uh, if you um, yeah, if you try to put it into a, a container that's got nails in it for example or screws silver nitrate will tend to dissolve those because you get a decomposition silver is very low on the um, reactivity series whereas iron is very high so the iron will displace the silver uh, and it will become iron nitrate which is not very good for nails so the, it's a very corrosive substance for exactly that reason so um, but also uh, if you get this in your eyes uh, it will cause blindness so you need to handle it uh, with some respect okay it's 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 I wouldn't classify it as a dangerous chemical because it's very easy to be sensible with it so for example if I'm mixing it up I use my goggles I have um, a Draeger half, half face mask which I use two particulate filters and that goes on I wear that every single time I never operate with silver nitrate without um, certainly without the goggles if I'm just pouring that into another container I will put my goggles on if I'm making that up I wear the mask I also uh, wear gloves I haven't brought those out but I wear gloves because the crystals of this and, and indeed the solution will stain your skin okay now um, you can get rid of that stain with a chelating agent like um, sodium thiosulfate which is just a um, uh, fixer uh, ordinary fixer so um, a pretty nasty chemical all in all you do need to treat it with uh, respect if you've got children in the house don't leave that anywhere um, where they could get to it uh, at all and, you know not under the sink with the bleach put it well out of the way put it into a locked cupboard and make sure it's locked every time it is a it is a nasty chemical um, now I don't there's plenty there's plenty uh, in these old um, processes um, that can cause you real damage uh, daguerreotypes for example and I have made good daguerreotypes myself um, but the developer for some uh, processes in a daguerreotype is uh, mercury fumes <laughs> okay so you know there's plenty of opportunity to do yourself some serious damage with these chemicals and the thing is <clears throat> not to be afraid to do it because the chemicals are dangerous the, the the way forward is to understand what the risks are make yourself a risk assessment mitigate against those risks as far as you can and handle the chemicals very very carefully uh, and you will be fine um, but don't take unnecessary risks okay and we'll come back to this point time and again don't be afraid of it though wear the protective gear handle it carefully sensibly and properly no problem okay so that's my sort of safety talk i can't stress it strongly enough Right. Be sensible, be careful, take the precautions, understand what your risks are, but don't let it put you off. This is a perfectly doable um, process. If you want to be put off by some things, then be put off by uh, mercury vapour and something we'll talk about in the next video. Okay, so silver nitrate. Uh, this, is what, this is what makes your... Uh, wet plate light sensitive. So let's talk a little about the chemistry. When you make uh, a wet plate what you do is take a glass plate or an um, aluminium plate or some, something of that sort and you pour um, collodion onto it. Now collodion is, uh, 
is nitrous cellulose, uh, which is a very explosive substance, but nitrous cellulose dissolved in ether. Uh, ether and then you use some ethanol. Um, and it's 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 not uh, volatile in, in that uh, in that form. So, but it sets as a gel. So whilst it's wet, what you do is dissolve some salts into it. You dissolve small amounts of um, usually iodide and bromide. So you've got those in suspension in the gel, and then you dip that plate into the silver nitrate. And what happens is that the silver nitrate is, um, you know, all nitrates are completely soluble. So in water, completely dissociates. So you have the silver ions and you have the nitrate ions and they propagate through the uh, matrix. And as they're doing so, they, um, the silver um, um, combines, make you get a double decomposition with the salts that you've put into the matrix. So you end up with silver iodide, for example, and silver bromide. And those are light sensitive chemicals. Now let's, um, let's wind back a little bit uh, into the dim and distant past of photography. And if you were ever shooting in black and white and you were doing your own enlargements, you might, uh, you might remember uh, things like uh, multigrade uh, heads, where you change the colour of the light to change the sensitivity of the paper. And that's because the papers, the black and white papers, had silver bromide and silver chloride, uh, the uh, halide salts. And they were, they were sensitive in slightly different regions of the spectrum. So you could change the colors and that would change the sensitivity of your paper. And you get a multigrade paper. Incredibly clever stuff. And that's essentially what you're doing here. Only you, you, we tend not to use chlorides, we tend to use uh, iodides and bromides. Excuse me. Um, now this double decomposition idea we also see in things like salt prints. So in a salt print you would um, uh, you would coat your paper with um, sodium chloride, which is just table salt, dip that into silver nitrate and you get a double decomposition and you end up with silver chloride on your paper and you can make a print. That's called a salt print. Um, so it, it's a process that's common. So you've got your, you've got your plate, uh, you dip it in your silver nitrate and then it becomes sensitive, you uh, dry off the back and because this is reliant upon the chemicals propagating through the matrix, it has to happen whilst the matrix is still wet, hence the term wet plate. Once the matrix has dried, the chemicals can't propagate through it anymore. So you have to do your sh shooting and your developing and you're fixing all before the paper, the matrix has dried out. Okay, so that's just a little bit of the uh, chemistry. Let's get back to silver nitrate. Silver nitrate, most salts, when you dissolve most salts, they are pH neutral. I brought my pH papers out with me here. Uh, these are what I use to check pH. Um, I have went previously I've used pH strips and also a pH meter, a very sensitive pH meter because I happened to be working at a place that had this, uh, this equipment. Now, when I was previously doing wet plate and I'd made up my silver nitrate solution, all the uh, literature will tell you you want your silver nitrate solution to be around pH 4. When I made mine, it was pH 6. Uh, and, that's not, and I couldn't understand that. Um, and what I couldn't understand is that the people were saying, no, it, they... When I dissolve my silver nitrate, it just goes to pH 4, and salts shouldn't do that. But silver nitrate is a bit of a strange salt. It's, um, it, it's, what, it's what might be called a Lewis acid, I believe. Although I'm a physicist, not a chemist, so don't rely on that. Um, so I was, I was getting this problem. Now, uh, in those days, uh, I, um, I was able to get, get hold of from work. Um, fuming nitric acid. That's as concentrated as it gets. And let me tell you, 
it took quite a lot of nitric acid to pull that one litre of silver nitrate down to pH 4. So I was a bit sceptical about all of this, uh, so I bought uh, a new batch of silver nitrate recently and literally all you do is dissolve the salts in distilled water, good to go. So I checked my pH, I got my silver nitrate, checked my pH and it was pH 5, which is better than my previous uh, experience. But I still wanted to get that down, so what I ended up doing was adding one milliliter of concentrated nitric acid in, into this one liter of um, silver nitrate. Now, m most um, practitioners will probably use glacial acetic acid to do this to do this job to pull the pH down. Um, but I don't, I don't do that because uh, I think that um, you're introducing essentially an impurity. Whereas if I use uh, nitric acid, uh, nitric acid, then I'm putting nitrates in a nitrate solution. So I'm not, in, I'm not really introducing uh, any. Uh, any impurities by doing that, although having said that, nitric acid can be difficult to get hold of. Uh, I'm fortunate because my brother has a, a, a chemistry uh, research business, so I could get myself 20 mils from him. Uh, but if you can't get nitric acid, use glacial acetic acid. It isn't going to take much just to get your pH down to pH 4. Now let's talk about concentration. You want a 9% solution. Now that's in one litre, that's 90 grams. Now I've got a, um, a silver bath here. This is my old uh, 10 by 8 silver bath. Uh, it's got a dipper in there. You put, you put your plate on there and drop it into the water, sorry, into the nitrate, silver nitrate solution, and you leave it in there for about three or four minutes. This takes about a litre, and that'll be fine for it. However, I also want to use the 12 by 20. Now, a 12 by 20 um, tank takes three and a half litres. So I've made up four litres. Now, four litres and 90 grams per litre is 360 grams. I usually work on silver nitrate being a pound a gram. It is, however, um, price-wise, a very volatile um, substance because it's dependent upon the price of silver. And silver is one of those things that's traded on global markets, a bit like gold and platinum and diamonds. So the silver price fluctuates all the time. And the consequence of that is that so does the silver nitrate price. So actually, I got um, my recent uh, batch, and I bought 500 grams, for about 60, 70 pence a gram, something like that. Uh, so the price was quite good, but, but in general, reckon on about a pound a gram. Okay, so that's, um, that's kind of it for silver nitrate. That's my solution. I've got four bottles like that so that I can fill up the uh, 12 by 20 um, tank. Uh, and that's it. That's all. That's kind of all there is to it. Add the crystals, stir the water. There is one more thing. Um, I almost forgot. Silver nitrate like this uh, isn't really going to work all that well. You need to ripen it. You need to mature it. And the way you do that typically is to put uh, a coated plate. So you pour your collodion onto a plate and dip that into the tank and leave it overnight. Then some of the bromides and iodides will have leached out of that plate into your uh, silver nitrate and it'll be good to go. There is a quicker method if you take, I mean literally just uh, a few milligrams even, just a few grains of potassium iodide and drop it straight in there and that'll do the job as well. Um, so you do need to do that before your silver nitrate will work. So pH 4, 9% solution, which is 90 grams per litre, and uh, um, a little bit of iodide, may maybe from a coated plate, is the usual way of doing that. And uh, your silver nitrate bath is good to go. Now there's a lot more uh, to do with silver nitrate. It tends to be the bane of 
uh, wet platers' lives from, uh, from from the forums, uh, and you have to maintain your silver bath. You have to look after it, and as that becomes necessary, I'll do videos about that as well. Okay, so I hope that was of some use. The next video in this series is going to be about uh, fixers. That'll be short and sweet, and then also there'll be one for developers. Uh, and then we'll see where we're at. So I hope that was of some interest. Bye for now.